Chapter 3 A Life of Grace and Peace In the first chapter of the second epistle of Peter, you will find the promise that grace and peace will be multiplied unto you if you will add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Read in Second Peter 1, verses 5 to 7. These virtues are wonderful treasures. They make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Read in Isaiah 13, 12. If these things be in you and abound, they shall make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See 2 Peter 1, 8. Shall we not strive to use to the very best of our ability the little time that is left us in this life, adding grace to grace, power to power, making it manifest that we have a source of power in the heavens above? Christ says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. See Matthew twenty-eight eighteen. What is this power given to him for? For us. He desires us to realize that he has returned to heaven as our elder brother and that the measureless power given him has been placed at our disposal. Those who will carry out in their lives the instruction given to the church through the Apostle Peter will receive power from above. We are to live upon the plan of addition, giving all diligence to make our calling and election sure. We are to represent Christ in all that we say and all that we do. We are to live His life. The principles by which He was guided are to shape our course of action toward those with whom we are associated. When we are securely anchored in Christ, we have a power that no human being can take from us. Why is this? Because we are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, partakers of the nature of him who came to this earth clothed with the habiliments of humanity, that he might stand at the head of the human race and develop a character that was without spot or stain of sin. Why are so many of us so weak and inefficient? It is because we look to self studying our own temperaments and wondering how we can make a place for ourselves, our individuality, and our peculiarities in the place of studying Christ and His character. Brethren who could work together in harmony if they would learn of Christ, forgetting that they are Americans or Europeans, Germans or Frenchmen, Swedes, Danes or Norwegians, seem to feel that if they should blend with those of other nationalities, something of that which is peculiar to their own country and nation would be lost and something else would take its place. My brethren, let us put all this aside. We have no right to keep our minds stayed on ourselves, our preferences and our fancies. We are not to seek to maintain a peculiar identity of our own, a personality and individuality which will separate us from our fellow laborers. We have a character to maintain, but it is the character of Christ. Having the character of Christ, we can carry on the work of God together. The Christ in us will meet the Christ in our brethren, and the Holy Spirit will give that union of heart and action which testifies to the world that we are children of God. May the Lord help us to die to self and be born again, that Christ may live in us a living, active principle, a power that will keep us holy. Strive earnestly for unity. Pray for it. Work for it. It will bring spiritual health, elevation of thought, nobility of character, heavenly mindedness, enabling you to overcome selfishness and evil surmisings, and to be more than conquerors through him that loved you and gave himself for you. Crucify self. Esteem others better than yourselves. 
Thus you will be brought into oneness with Christ. Before the heavenly universe and before the church and the world, you will bear unmistakable evidence that you are God's sons and daughters. God will be glorified in the example that you set. The world needs to see worked out before it the miracle that binds the hearts of God's people together in Christian love. It needs to see the Lord's people sitting together in heavenly places in Christ. Will you not give in your lives an evidence of what the truth of God can do for those who love and serve Him? God knows what you can be. He knows what divine grace can do for you if you will be partakers of the divine nature.